I'm uh, somebody who uh, actually started in New York City years ago as a rock and roll journalist. And uh, being a journalist, I became interested in the legal rights of writers. Uh, and that led me to go to law school, where I started writing about entertainment law. Also, I became a member of the New York Bar and combined the two. I combined uh, law and writing. Um, during the 1980s and the mid-80s, I founded a publication called Entertainment Law and Finance, which I still edit today. That's a monthly publication. It's a practical how-to look at current uh, cutting-edge issues in entertainment law. And we know that there are many uh, cutting-edge issues, especially in the digital age, in entertainment law. And um, in, uh, oh, about seven years, in 2000, I, I became a uh, chairman of the music department at the University of Colorado at Denver. And I did that for three years and then uh, thought that uh, full-time teaching and research would be really uh, of high interest to me, and that's what I've been doing since then. Uh, Entertainment Law and Finance is published by American Lawyer Media, and it's um, uh, L ljnonline.com. Uh, is the website to go for information about entertainment, law, and finance. One of the uh, first things I do is I, because we have so many constitutional related issues in, entertain in intellectual property, so I'm, uh, early on I do point out that in the U.S. Constitution that the founders uh, did provide for a constitutional right of copyright that was recognized uh, as early as that point, the, the right of creators and also really to urge people to as an engine of free expression, as the U.S. Supreme Court has said. So I try to um, explain that concept and get, and get that uh, planted early on. And then, of course, just go to the basics about uh, what, how, how do you, uh, uh, when do you have a copyright, which, of course, is from the moment that a, uh, an expression of work, a creative work, is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. Well, we, we were slow... Um, to sign the Berne Convention for one. We, did, we didn't become a signatory to the Berne Convention until the late 80s, which is really the probably the most important international uh, copyright treaty that there is. We, we today, we're worldwide, we're much more aggressive in talking to other nations about intellectual property rights. But we have not always been at the forefront where we really should, should have been, I think, for, for quite a long time before we got got to the burn, point of the Berne Convention. Um, so we're, we're a member of a number of the international copyright treaties, but for instance, we're not a member of the Rome Convention, which is one of the stronger ones on uh, anti-piracy. We're not a member because we don't uh, afford a public performance rights to sound recordings, um, we, which most nations do. We do give a public performance right in the musical composition that's within the sound recording, but we don't do it for the sound recording itself when it's played on traditional radio. If there isn't a perform public performance right for sound recordings in the United States, in traditional radio airplay, do we have one for sound recordings? And the answer is yes. Uh, we have had one with the digital rights, the federal uh, digital rights legislation that was passed in the 1990s for digital uses of sound recordings, and of course, meaning uh, internet transmissions. Artists getting paid royalties, um, it's an international issue in the sense that it's common for artists not to be paid royalties, including here in the US, or not to always be paid accurate royalties. Um, so it's a fundamental concern for, for so artists just, and for it's creators. It's not just undeveloped third world countries. Not just it's in every, even the developed countries that, that uh, have the uh, convenience of statistics. And Correct, correct. But in terms of uh, international treatment of our copyrights, through the World Trade Organization, um, we are able at least to, uh, we have a special trade representative who issues a report for nations that we think are not uh, respecting uh, or enforcing our copyrights. And, and that's not uncommon for us to, uh, you know, to have our special trade representative uh, complain about treatment of our copyrights in other nations because uh, we, we hear much more today about internet piracy, about file sharing, but traditional, so-called traditional piracy um, has been going on a long time, not just in the U.S., but of our 
copyrights and intellectual property works overseas. It's, it's been a worldwide issue for a long, long time. We're a major exporter of intellectual property. Uh, that's one of our top industries. It has been for the last few years now. Um, th that's the good news. The, the bad news is that uh, as, as our uh, intellectual property, our copyrights have become of greater interest to the world, uh, there's been, that has also caused the increase in, in piracy, the desire to get our property.